كيف حطوا الكريني اول شيء ما لكم yeah <clears throat> well guys welcome back uh, till now what we have discussed if there is any question you can ask me 
Uh, let me give you permission to keep your mics unmute. Yes. Okay. So uh, if or in case if there is any question, you can ask me. Otherwise, we are going to start now. And whoever whoever is not present right now, later on I am not going to answer this question because he is late. Now, uh, guys, uh, in case if there is any question, please ask me. Sir, I want to take a screen sort of uh, first topic. First topic. Yes, sir. Which one? First one, first one. Hey, uh, no, no, no. First one, uh, after this. After this, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Done? Yeah, done, sir. Okay. Okay, fine. Now, we are going to discuss. Any any question, guys, by the way? Anybody else? Questions? No? Okay. No, what did we discuss? Uh, till now, what we have discussed? We have discussed that in case if we are having health and safety management system, what are the main components of health and safety management system? And... Uh, it moves around one cycle that is the PDCA plan, do, check and act cycle. And how we have to, how we can use it. Now, uh, the question, uh, now the next part is about the management systems work that how it works. Okay. And it's main component policy, which is basically uh, the one which sets the target. So moving through our first slide, that is basically our policy. Uh, that is, we are going to have an introduction about health and safety policy. Health and safety policy is basically an important document. Why it is an important document? Because it is the foundation stone for good health and safety management in an organization. Your policy basically sets the target, sets out the aims, and it gives you direction what you have to do, okay? It is basically the foundation stone of your good health and safety management system. And it basically established the foundation for you guys where you can establish, you can construct your safety management system. If the foundation is strong, policy is strong, of course, it would be easier for you to establish your health and safety management system. What it does, let us start discussing. First of all, it sets out the organization's aims. What are aims? Targets. What are our targets which we use to set over here? We will see them. Okay, that what it sets. Sooner we will see all the, all, all the set targets in the coming slides. The next is it identifies who is responsible for achieving these aims. What first it sets the target. These are our targets. Who is going to achieve these? Okay, let me give you the example. Uh, ABC Landscaping is an organization. Safety is their first priority. Okay, we want a zero incident in our organization and to achieve this zero incident rate, our health safety, uh, health and safety department will be working to achieve this. I mean, just I, I just created this statement. Okay, that who will be, who is responsible, health and safety management is responsible for achieving zero incident rate. Now, it states how the aims are to be achieved. Now, the statement says to achieve the aims, to achieve the target, health and safety management can do whatever is reasonably practicable. Usually, these kind of wordings, wordings are mentioned over there that they will be leaving no stone unturned to achieve this target. I mean, this kind means what are our targets? Okay, zero incident, who is responsible, health and safety management, manager, supervisor, coordinators, how they are going to achieve it, A, B, C, D, our plans are these, and 
this this by the way these targets uh, this safety policy is specific to each organization's requirement based on the job scope based on the size of the organization based on the area or the cultural requirements what is the product of your organization whatever the raw material you are going to be used what are your international implementation or obligations what are your local local obligations based on that you are setting your policy that is why we are having different policies for different organizations maybe two organizations working for same thing like paper uh, pap they are have they are doing some kind of paper production like some kind of cups or some kind of they are making some kind of books it seems both organizations are doing the same job but area to area culture to culture maybe size of the organization and because of the size of the organization they would be having different policies like one organization is just established right now their size is very small they are taking raw material from some other organization and they are preparing something and then they are uh, producing the main product on the other side one organization who is having um, who is bigger in size and what they are doing they are having their own raw material and they are creating something by their raw, raw material so of course the, although their main target is same their main product is same but because the job scope is now different so their policies might be different okay and of course we cannot have one policy that could be fit in all all organization because it depends upon organization to organization their working procedures are also matter and this is basically these are the two questions why might the health and safety policy of two organizations be different although they are having similar jobs okay now the question is the, this is the question the answer is clear why is not there a prescribed one size fits all approach to develop a policy that we should be having one structured policy we give it to everyone and they will be preparing their own policies no it depends upon the organization to organization and by the way the next uh, in the next slide the question is why is an organization health and safety policy is so important because it is a foundation stone it sets our target it tells us that whatever first of all it will be setting the target it will be telling us who will be achieving who is responsible to achieve those targets how he is going to achieve those targets so that is why it is very important for us because it is giving us the clear direction clear roles and responsibilities that what to achieve and how to achieve and who will be achieving then why my two organization doing similar work have different policies i gave you the example of the raw material one organization is having their own raw material on the other side one is purchasing the raw material from some from somewhere else and of course both would be having uh, the product they are producing the same product but on the other side because of their job scope is different their size is different their context is different so of course Uh, they would be having they might be having different policies so i hope so all these four questions are clear to you guys any any question if someone's um, if someone wants to ask no okay one question guys am i audible Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Yes, sir. Order. Um, fine. Now there are some kind of uh, guidelines. Okay, guidelines are uh, guidelines are given just uh, for us. Why do we have to do this, and where do we have to go? I mean, these kind of guidelines are there. Let us see Article fourteen of ILO Recommendation R one six four. What it tells us, it requires employers, companies. to set down in writing your policy should be in writing policy and arrangements okay you have to write it you have to write all kind of policies in you have to provide all kind of policies in written form 
okay you have to mention the arrangements over there so that the health and safety management system can be implemented and why do they have to do it the first line says where circumstances warrant it means in case maybe it is the requirement of the legal state or state laws requirements are there that you must be having some kind of written policy one thing second thing in a readily understood language or medium maybe multilingual uh, policy could be published could be pasted on the notice board so that you guys would be able to understand it and in case if it is a long policy then people should be able, able to understand uh, about the policy that what is the main policy of our organization what they want what are the set targets how we are going to achieve it clear so two things are there one is a written policy written policy is because sometimes our state is requiring us our law is requiring us to mention everything in written by the way it's good because no one can change his words so it is the state requirement second thing it should be in a way in it should be written in a, in a language in a medium that people should be able to understand whoever is working with you perhaps in hindi urdu uh, arabic english of course it it should be over there in in different language whatever the whoever the workers are working with you next is there are three parts of health and safety policy and our main topic is this these are our three parts what are the three parts of our health and safety policy first statement of intent our intentions statement we will be giving one statement and that statement shows our intention what is the meaning of intention that what we are going to do what is going to be done what we are going to do what is going to be done by our organization in terms of health and safety then organization organization as i mentioned that you are going to organize just like we are organizing our table just like we are organizing our room so if we talk about organization who is going to do it means you are defining some kind of roles and responsibilities by the way we will discuss all these three points in details huh? then arrangements how they are going to do it i asked you this is my target faizan you do this but how he will be doing it i have to tell him how he has to do it okay so now we are going to discuss all these one by one in details first part is general statement of intent in general statement of intent you basically set overall aims and objectives of your organization yes fizan in previous slide uh, the basically we have discussed the three parts of hns policy so first yeah. was statement of intent yeah so in the statement of intent what is going to be done so can you clarify this one yeah we will clarify all these one by one over here that what is going to be done over here okay. who is going to do it over here okay and how we are going to do over here okay we will discuss all these one by one okay sir anyone else no so our first part is what is going to be done means the statement of intent we are going to discuss the statement of intent right now so first thing is general statement of intent which basically sets overall aims and objectives overall what is our main target of course we are having some set targets but overall we will be having complete targets that this is our main target and these are our main objectives and it basically tells us that we should be complying with the law guys uh, over here one one thing i would like to mention that whenever we are going to talk about targets remember targets should be included in the statement of intent to show commitment to improve that we are going to improve ourselves for example uh, accident rate that accident rate would be reduced or increased what do you think we have to reduce it or increase it of course we have to reduce it 
right accident rate uh, we have yes. to reduce the absence yes uh, we have to go for the active monitoring participation delivery of key objective for example risk assessment delivery of training program we will be setting all these targets over here in this uh, general statement of intent okay we will be complying with the law how we are going to comply with the law we have to follow all the rules and regulations as per the state law achieving standards we have to achieve the standards for example we will be identifying uh, quality standards quality not in terms of quality of the products quality in terms of our health and safety quality the quality of trainings we are giving the quality of the reports we are giving okay so we'll be achieving the standards and reminds workers at all level of their responsibilities that guys see these are our set targets okay signed and dated by the most senior person usually the top management is the one who is signing all these things and then we have to review it regularly okay guys when whenever we are going to set our target remember our targets are going to be set in a way which should be achievable which should be specific straight away measurable achievable reasonable time bound which is mentioned here in front of you in the slide we call it smart objective that whenever we are going to set our target it should be as per smart acronym what is that smart says first of all your target should be specific okay it should be specific what we are going to do it should be clearly defined it should be precise second measurable it should be having some kind of number towards a target should be quantifiable quantity should be mentioned like if i say we will be just improving our safety culture of the organization within how many days how many years i did not define okay third thing achievable that it should be done if i say that within one day i am going to improve my safety culture is it achievable no what about reasonable that it should some kind of time scale reasonable time scale should be mentioned along with the resources if i ask you that i would be protecting from uh, fall but i don't provide you any kind of resources mean full body harness to perform your job at height or i don't provide any kind of guardrail around the platform where you are working is it reasonable resources are not being provided to you right then time bound deadline should be mentioned in which time scale should be given clearly okay for example a failed statement is improving the safety culture of the organization that i am going to improve the safety culture of the organization it seems that we are setting a good policy that you will be improving the safety culture of the organization but what about the smart smart objective is it smart improving the safety culture of the organization first of all is it clearly defined no in culture what you are going to improve if i come to you what about the training you'll say no i did not mean to improve the training i was improving the inspection actually i mean to improve the inspection means nothing is clear there okay one second thing measurable is it measurable did we have some kind of quantified target let me mention it over here then it would be easier for you to have a better understanding so oh, just a minute for example i am writing a statement of the organization 
this is the statement improve the safety culture of the organization is it specific no is it measurable within how many days what about the target no achievable can be done yes somehow we say okay it can be done we can improve it we do one step uh, we take one step and we say we are improved okay fine reasonable is there any time scale no resources are mentioned there no what about the time bound is it time bound give me some kind of deadline no so this is basically a failed statement okay so what we have to do let us review another statement okay or let us see one another statement that is basically the review all 48 risk assessments within a 12 months period if we look to this statement is it specific yes measurable quantity is mentioned 48 yes okay specific is we are going to review okay what risk assessment measurable yes achievable you can do it in 12 months yes reasonable within the time scale resources are there no uh, no proper resources are mentioned over here but yes within 12 months of time period we are going to review it yes time bound deadline time scale is given yes so we have to whenever we are going to mention something we are going to set our target we are going to make our policy what we have to do we will be going with the smart objective okay and once we write our statement as per the smart objective believe me you can achieve it you are setting a target which is achievable which is uh, specific measurable reasonable and time bound and that basically improves the culture of the organization moving to the next over here <clears throat> Guys, next point says that it will be important to consider who is going to set the objective. By the way, who usually set the objective? Of management. Very nice. How objectives will be set at each functional level? How we are going to set them at each functional level? We will see. Okay. What about legal and other requirements? Guys, give me a minute, huh? Give me a minute, please. I'll be. Uh, sorry for the interruption, guys. <clears throat> so, legal and other requirements, we have. Uh, who will be doing this what about the legal and other requirements who will fulfill we have to consider them what about the hazards and risks we will be facing during the achievement of that target what about the technology technological options what kind of technolo technology we are going to use for example are we going to use social media to communicate yes or no we will have to see is it possible to use then financial, operational, and business requirements. What about the stakeholders? What about the views of interested parties? Who are our interested parties? Okay, what about their set targets? Okay, so we will be having all these things considered before we are going to set our policy. Clear? Is it clear for everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Someone spoke. Okay, moving further. There is a group exercise and uh, that says that target may be included in the statement of intent to show commitment to improve. Okay, what targets could be included? Guys, uh, as I have mentioned that uh, we will be checking for we'll be making uh, we'll be putting the keeping the target for example accident rates okay one 
for example we will check for absenteeism okay and uh, we will be checking about inspections okay for i mean how many inspection or what kind of inspection we will be doing okay we will be going for the risk assessments trainings etc i mean these are some even the tbts will be coming there in case sorry tbts in case if we have to conduct so all these are basically our usual set target these are just the general in, general examples moving further organizational roles and responsibilities guys what we were discussing till now we were discussing about the general statement of intent that what is going to be done okay over here what is going to be done okay how we are going to set our target this is this is the part of what is going to be done and once we are setting what is going to be done what are the factors to be considered okay so this is the first part of the health and safety policy which is basically the general statement of intent now we are going to talk about the organization part who is going to do it this is about organizational roles and responsibilities that who is going to do it you guys would be having this kind of picture or organizational chart in your books please open that and just have a look that where is the managing director it is coming over here directors are here okay managers are here under the director then supervisors are there depending upon organization chart sometime coordinators are here sometime coordinators are here depending upon the organization chart okay or organization to organization then after the managers supervisors come then employees come health and safety advisors are here which are advising them at all level okay so over here we will be discussing this one but from here i am having the text and you guys will keep watching guys in organizational roles and responsibilities are first of all which outlines the chain of command for health and safety management this is your chain of command okay now it identifies the roles and responsibilities of the staff there is there are roles and responsibilities we will be discussing about it then usually includes an organizational chart relating to health and safety this one okay shows line of communication and feedback these are the line of communication these one okay this this one this one and this is the feedback line these are the communication communication feedback communication i mean the, how we are going to communicate with each other clear this is the organizational chart now in the organizational chart we are defining roles and responsibilities the ceo or the managing director is ultimately responsible and accountable whatever is going to be done in the organization management okay They are responsible for day to day management by the way over here supervisors also come in the management the line manager the foreman okay all employees they are responsible for acting safely these are the employees they are responsible for acting safely because by the way these these are the guys who are actually or real project executor they are doing the jobs they are the units okay then there are some competent persons competent persons are basically those persons which can have dual job for example safety officers safety supervisors these are having dual jobs means they would be first aiders as well they would be the fire marshals as well they are 
emergency responders as well. Then we are having some kind of specialist health and safety practitioners who are responsible for providing advice to support management and employees at all level. They are just doing their support at all level, right? So these are the, this is the organizational roles. Uh, uh, this is the organizational chart, and these are the roles and responsibilities. Okay, and uh, what are the arrangements we make so that we can fulfill our roles and responsibilities? For example, we are we are having some certain topics. Okay, and these are some gen these are basically general topics. Other than these, we are having some certain or specific topics. Which are basically defining about how we are going to arrange our health and safety management system. For example, who is going to carry out the risk assessment? What about the information, training, and instruction? Who will be providing it? Accidents and near miss reporting. What is the methodology of reporting? Okay. What about recording and investigation of the incidents? who is going to consult with the worker who is going to talk with the worker who is going to develop safe system of work or how or what kind of safe system of work we are making what about the welfare and first aid provision do you remember yesterday we discussed about welfare facilities what are the welfare facilities ppes ppes ppe is not the welfare facility Resulter. Okay. Any washrooms providing them shower? Uh, yeah. Transportation, sir. I wash station. Yeah, I wash station. Very nice transportation. Okay. Food. Emergency vehicle. Emergency respond ve uh, response vehicle. That is not the welfare ambulance. Could be that would be in the first aid provision. Okay. Recreation facilities. Sorry? Recreation. Very nice. Recreation facility. Okay. So these are basically the welfare facilities. And then next is fire safety medical and its prevention. Medical, medical will yes, yes, Abdul Qadir medical will be coming over here. First aid provision. Okay, that the usually our medics are there who are providing the first aid. Okay, then emergency procedures. What are the emergency procedures we have to include over there? And for different kind of emergencies, first of all, we identify what are the expected emergencies and what are the possible responses. We prepare our emergency responders so that we can respond on that. Then compliance monitoring, in which includes the audit, that whatever we have prepared, are we complying with these, all these? Who will be monitoring it? How he will be monitoring it? And in the audit, everything will come up. Finally, once we perform the audit, everything would be clear for us that either our system is basically running in a positive way or in a negative way. By the way, in chapter three, we will discuss about it. So I hope so. These points are clear. Yes, sir. Clear. Very nice. Guys, other than these points, based on your organization, do you have some other points coming in your mind regarding the arrangements of health and safety? Remember, we are saying arrangements of health and safety, including some kind of safe system of work or safe working procedures. What kind of procedures are there on which you, you guys are working on? We Other are than, currently working at height procedures. Very nice. Working at height. Confined space procedures. Confined space procedures. Nice. And uh, uh, hot work procedures. Hot work procedures. Good. Sir, isolation procedures. Isolation procedures. Uh, pretty generally, we cover all this uh, normally. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. Some, some of the additional procedures are mentioned over here. For example, lawn working, when you are working alone, okay, like in the desert, 
people are working alone for uh, i give you the example some days back i was in neom okay till now it's not very much populated on the road once i was moving on the road i observed that we were having over there we were having cleaning staff which is basically posted like 2 kilometers away from each other um, perhaps 2 kilometer is my estimation maybe it's more i have taken some pictures i would be putting those pictures in the slide and once you will be discussing the lawn working the chapter in ig2 we will be discussing about them i will show you the pictures if something happens to them those guys who are standing over there at a distance of 2 kilometers each other one guy is standing here one guy is standing here he is performing his cleaning job and he is doing his cleaning job if something happens to them who is responsible how he is going to announce the emergency if he get the heart attack who is going to rescue him how the person how i know that he is sick maybe some animal from the desert right so these are the things we have to identify these are some of the risks and problems we need to identify and we are concerning about these next is uh, just like lawn working we are having noise exposure control if depending upon the activity we are having it vibration exposure control what about the control of exposure to toxic material as you can see over here okay which are hazardous to your health then control of crowds in case if we are having too many people over there working uh, with us during the morning at the time when the once the people are reporting to the project break time lunch time and evening sorry lunch time evening time once they are leaving back how we are going to control them what about man machine interface then control of transportation risk when whenever we are bringing the people material equipment from uh, one area to another area then what about specific health surveillance requirement health surveillance is when you are going to monitor the health of your people without having any sickness that people are not sick but you are just you just keep monitoring them that in case if someone is sick then i have to isolate him from the other people for example if someone is infected i have to keep him away from the other people i have to isolate him because if i will not be isolating him all the people will be infected and of course i have to stop the job so health surveillance are important for us we'll be thinking about it we'll be taking care about these thing and what about the waste disposal whatever the products i am going to be generated of course there are some kind of waste okay which could be hazardous so what about the waste disposal how i am going to waste it so all these factors all these arrangements their specific risks and problems we need to consider and we are basically mentioning it in the arrangement section of the policy okay so guys what we have discussed till now we have discussed two points one is general statement of intent one is the organization part okay the next is arrangements what uh, by the way we we also have discussed arrangements right yes we have discussed arrangements we have discussed the arrangements okay over here there is one uh yeah over here there is one question how can a policy be effectively communicated when it should be reviewed this is by the way we we uh, we are going to discuss now and uh, just for the continuity i did not give you the continuity after the organizational part we move to the third point that is the arrangement but i did not tell you guys over here we have discussed statement of intent organization and arrangement that what is going to be done who is going to do it and how we are going to do it all these things are mentioned in the policy is that clear for everyone in the general statement of intent we discuss this okay in i mean the smart objective then organizational part we discussed who will do what and then we made some arrangements regarding the health and safety okay that how we are going to do it so i hope so all the three parts of health and safety policy is covered and 
is clear for everyone if not please let me know any question guys considering there is no question i am moving further the question is how the policy can be effectively communicated when we have to review it what do you think why do you how you can communicate the policy effectively sir by giving the individual responsibilities individual responsibility okay any point or or we can say that by preparing a proper channel uh, that the uh the uh, can i speak yes why not yeah uh, see this uh, how how can policy be effectively communicated that answer should be that a proper tbt and proper uh, uh, training and guidance uh, our po policy should be implemented to the ground staff very nice individual ground staff very nice anyone else thank you thank you welcome anyone else yeah it has to be communicated in a proper medium where everybody can be understandable very nice communication medium guys communication can be done verbally okay you can write it and you can communicate you can put some kind of posters you can make some kind of videos visuals could be shared with the people so that they can have a better understanding about it clear we can say the meeting meetings are also there very nice acha ji inductions inductions are there very nice good so these are all the points which we will be using to communicate the policy effectively when it should be reviewed very simple whenever there is change in the key personnel the management is changed management structure is changed some people they got promotion some they got demotion if we get some kind of process technology law change legislation law change in case with the same policy if we get some kind of incident in case if we get some kind of enforcement action implemented on us by legal or state law after an audit once we get ncrs usually or some kind sometimes we don't get ncrs we get recommendations okay after worker consultation once you are consulting with the workers and you get that with this current policy it is hard for the workers to perform their job okay then with the passage of time perhaps annually it is just for example mentioned for example annually it is up to you you can review it within 3 months if your organization size is not very large it is up to you but usually we are annually reviewing it so these are the factors which are basically uh, helping us in identifying that if we have to review the policy or not now uh, guys this is your today's assignment and where you have to submit last time i am mentioning at gmail.com what are the three key parts to health and safety policy what type of targets might be referenced in the policy and where okay so 
you have to mention the three key parts of health and safety policy the three key parts are general statement of intent then general statement of organization, intent organization organization and, and then and then arrangement very well so okay what type of arrangements uh, sorry what type of targets might be referenced in the policy that should be countable at uh, achievable what types of targets accident rates ill health active monitoring for example inspection Playing training standard achievements complying with the standard yeah very nice very nice so we will be putting these targets we will be keeping very these nice. targets in our mind okay very nice over here guys i would yeah. like to mention we have ended up with our session this is the summary in the summary what we have discussed is the first we have discussed about the iso sorry ilo management system iso management system then we see that what are what is the policy what are the three components of the policy and when the policy has to be reviewed this is the summary of today's session now over here i would like to mention something here that during the exam the question might have been asked i am not saying that the question will come from this part but there may be a question regarding any kind of incident that if the incident happens in the organization okay what step we will be taking remember guys other than all the things other than implementation of controls remember you must review your policy reviewing does not mean that you have to change the policy you are just reviewing it maybe there is some flaw in case if there is some gap then we will be analyzing it and then we will be removing that gap so during the exam if there is a question that after the incident what you will be doing just focus on it that what about our policy this incident has happened because of this reason maybe there is a change in the policy is required so in case if the change in the policy is required go review your policy if change is required do that clear yes clear sir. for everyone yes, okay okay great so guys it was our uh, it was our lecture 2 element 2 i hope so uh, it would have been clear for everyone in case if someone wants to ask any question he can ask me otherwise i guess it is the time yes, of sir. break we can take a break for chapter 3 shanwaz i will come to you for chapter 3 do you want me to start it today or today is the weekend we can go it for the next, next. saturday will start sir can you repeat because there is noise i think mr adil you have to fix your mic yeah adil i guess you need to fix your mic yes sir uh, we start on saturday third chapter we will start on saturday okay our third chapter would be started on saturday yes, sir. Ronaldo, so you want tomorrow for tomorrow there is no class tomorrow there is no class as per schedule there was one sheet has been shared with you on the sheet it was mentioned tomorrow there will be no class fridays are off days yes so today, ronaldo up to this we are closing our session today yeah, yeah. okay uh yes sir uh, if you don't mind i want to have a copy of the audio record yesterday okay. yesterday and today because uh Uh, it is under discussion it had to be shared by today but till now it was not shared i will be personally looking it to looking into this matter and don't worry you will be having the recordings inshallah within one hour uh, miss yesterday and uh, some some uh, today also some uh, because uh, wallah we will share we will share no worries we will share thank we'll you share. thank okay. you and uh, someone also has raised his hand Mr Umar yes, you raised your hand That's Umar right. Turkumani No 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 uh, you said uh, everything is okay so I give you thumb okay 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 thank you thank you Yes next uh, who raised his hand Fezan Khan Shanawaz Fezan 
Yes, yes. Uh, just uh, again the same thing that still we have not added in WhatsApp group. And as per your confirmation, uh, we have coordinated with our coordinator. Uh, so if you will allow, then I can speak here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, see, I mentioned in the beginning of this class, I mentioned one number of Kamran. Yes, and yes, I yes, mentioned sir. that for all these purposes, you can communicate to him directly. So at the same time, we have dropped the one message on WhatsApp. So still, uh, we have not received any confirmation. I mentioned that he would, he might be adding you after seven. It's after seven now. Okay, maybe within one hour, he would be adding you. Okay, okay. if not... So yeah, you can leave. Okay. Uh, so, Shanawaz. Yeah, yes, sir. Thanks for it. Uh, sir, the same question which uh, one, one of our uh, guy he asked, asked about the recordings. Record, uh, regarding the Re uh, record. Uh, the recordings, record. you will be getting it, inshallah, within one hour. All the recordings will be shared to you. Yes, sir. Inshallah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sir, thank first you. day also, sir. First day recording as well. Uh, all the recordings, all the recordings. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, guys. Uh, I do think you have any? Do I have any? Do okay, yes. you have this PPT? PP. PPT. Uh, no need to ask for the PPT. Okay. People, they don't. Uh, I will. I will not share PPT. I should be straight with you because then you will not be reading. You will not be studying your book. Okay. And that is very big issue with the students. They don't study the book. They miss so many things which are helpful for the exam. Okay, so PPT, no. Okay. Yes, uh, Mr. Ronaldo. Uh, sir, uh, uh, sir, you already have my WhatsApp number. You already add me. Yeah, you are added there in the group. Not Yesterday, you were the first one who sent message. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Fine, guys. So enjoy your weekend. So okay. are we, are, nice. are we going to stop now? The class? Yeah, we will stop yeah. as as agreed by everyone. As agreed okay. by everyone, that we will be starting our session next day. I mean, on uh, on Saturday. Saturday. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank yes, you. Yes, uh, Fezan. Thank you so much, sir. Now I have been added in group. Thank you so much. Okay, okay, guys. Okay. Allah Hafiz. Okay, guys. Then fine. Goodbye, Allah Hafiz. See you after tomorrow. Salam Allah. Waalaikum salam.